Welcome back to the channel. All right, it's time for the top 10 science champions in the game. We do this semi-annually, and I always ask my Discord server. It's an incredibly smart server. The people with roles of honor get to nominate champions. Everyone's entitled to vote, and then we tabulate that, go over it, and I include that in my own personal rankings that we do in every June and every December. We take a month off from the general tier list. Now, if you're like, dude, we've already heard this. We've already heard the intro from Cabro and Baron Vega. We know how the metrics work. Of course, there's the timestamp in the description. You can jump straight to it, to my rankings. But the one thing I wanna make sure everyone always hears is the most important category, the most important thing, add 20 points to the score of the champion you enjoy most. You're gonna know how to play them. You're gonna know how to get the most out of them. This is a game you should have fun and you're also gonna play them very, very well as you go about taking rank up advice because this is meant to be informative, but it's also meant to be entertaining. Make sure you add 20 points to your favorite champion. All right, let's go ahead and jump straight into it. Hey, this is Baron Vega. Vega's asked me to do the introduction and explanation of his metric system that he and his friends from SSX came up with. In general, every champion is given a total score out of 40. I have been given a 31, which although I've been told is extremely good, I do believe it should be significantly higher, and I'm sure you agree with me. General is a possible 10 out of 10. This is essentially just how good is the champion. We all kind of intuitively know it. How many powerful abilities do they have? If new content comes out, are they some of the first champions you think of? Battlegrounds an important mode, great rewards, and a chance to really use your roster and strategy and knowledge of this game. There's a possible 10 points in your defensive capabilities to your champions was able to be included. I'm a great defender and a fantastic attacker. Therefore, I got an 8 out of 10. It should be a 10, but it's an 8. I'll take that up with Vega later. In war, you are not allowed to include your defensive prowess in the score. It is also out of 10 points. I've been given an eight, which as we all know is ridiculous, but I am told that it means this is a reliable attacker that is used often to take a variety of nodes and defenders, and you frequently see them used in high tier war. Long form content, Necropolis has the best rewards in the game, and long form has a total score possibility of five. Again, I should be a five out of five, but they've given me a three, meaning I was either able to be used consistently for a fight or two, or maybe very good in one lane in Necropolis, or I was good in Gauntlet or EOP. I happen to know I was phenomenal in all of them, and Vega is just wrong here, but that's fine. We'll move on. And then ease of use is a possible total three points. Three, meaning you are easy. Think of your archangels. I bet that Cabro gets a three out of three. That guy is mindless and simple. And then the toughest is a one, meaning your tigers and your Kate bishops. And I am too smart to ask anyone to spend that much time trying to learn how to play me. A two is just right. And this is the one score, aside from the 10 out of 10, that Vega got correct. All right, let's time to jump into science. Now, hopefully you've seen by now, you've caught on that uh, Baron Vega definitely leaked the information that our previous iteration had this as a best of 40. It is a best of 38. We toned down the amount of points possible for ease of use. And as usual, we're going to start off with the honorable mentions was definitely Morbius. He is way better, even at a low sig against the bleed immune opponents than I thought he would be. DLL called that out in his spotlight with context videos. Like I said, be a smart summoner. Go subscribe and listen to those. Um, I, you know, I had Red Guardian on here, but his buff has already been nerfed <laughs> in some ways. It's going to be interesting. One. I want to see uh, watch that play out. Uh, but they do seem to be nerfing his long form ability and potentially a slight buff to his short form. His short form seemed fine though. Like I don't know if this is fights that he's now going to be able to take uh, that he wasn't otherwise taking. Uh, anyways, moving on, Mr. Fantastic, Spot, Mr. Negative, and Captain America Infinity War shows you how incredibly strong science is. We all know that, but when you see it out in the number form, when you break it down here, you can really tell uh, this is a deep class and it is a strong class. All right, let's jump in and start off with our number 10. We actually have a tie, three champions. Just, again, how strong this class is. We have three champions tied at number 10. Uh, so that means we're going to end up with 12 champions ranked here. We've got the Overseer. He's phenomenal, right? Uh, so many association with B, McG, 
Uh, B and B was a big fan from uh, from the get go. I had to be a little bit convinced. I didn't really see the power, and then I took a, a boss fight with him, and that caused me to dive in. I asked the designer some questions. The designer was really kind and helped me uh, through and kind of understand the Overseer's kit. He's phenomenal. He's a phenomenal, phenomenal champion, and a really good example of a champion we, we've talked about in this series of uh, that the game is now asking us to do things. These, these nuggets of utility. So. It's not always just like the brute strength force of a champion, but these other little nuggets, right? And one of them is like Overseer getting stronger when he's immune to something. Uh, it's just it's just a really cool tactic. It's a really cool ability. He's very, very strong. I love him. Uh, nine out of 10 in general seems fine. BGs, uh, I was tempted to put him up a little bit higher, but the group kind of talked me down a little bit. He's a good two-way uh, dual threat, in my opinion, defender and offensive. I've won both, both style fights with him. He can be... Uh, I don't want, he's not slow in Battlegrounds, but he can be a little slow compared to your nukes, okay? So that's why we get the seven, eight. I think he's absolutely a staple. I love using him. He's got, he's got the utility, he's got the damage, and then he's got the safety. He's a big tanky boy. He's a big tanky boy. And he's even got to heal off that SP1. Long form, I think uh, BMG's already used him. I know that I'm intending to use him uh, in Necropolis for at least one path or a couple of fights there. And then easiest, I think he's a perfect example of a two. Not too hard, not too easy. Just right. He's a bit of a Goldilocks, this Uncle Hulk here. All right, let's move on to the other champions tied at the number 10 spot. None other than my boy Miguel. You know I love this champion. I played him for so long, I actually almost started to get bored of him. It wasn't him. It was just the repetitiveness of the fights in war, right? That Mangog. Uh, and I've talked about how much I enjoyed taking that Penny Park with him. It was on lane 7 and section 2. Uh, generally powerful, like the buff immunities, and then uh, really, really strong power control. Before Micro Chavez was buffed, Spider-Man 2099 just kind of laughed at her and was like, you think you're controlling power? You think you're doing damage? <laughs> you're doing neither. Uh, but she got buffed, and so that's cool that there's an option in the Mystic class. But this is about Miguel, Spider-Man 99. Uh, very strong in Battlegrounds. In fact, I, I haven't ranked mine to rank 5, and maybe I should, or maybe I haven't ranked 5. I haven't sent it. Either way, he's not as powerful as he possibly could be, and I've not used him in Battlegrounds as a result. He always felt a little too slow. But quite a few people in the chat that helped me out with this were like, no, we actually use him. He's very, very good. And because uh, you're not as concerned, it's a shorter fight. It's not as war. It's not as dangerous with the power gains. You can just go to your special two and do some really big damage off of that. So that's really cool. I, I, I love this champion. He's someone who I will consider ranking up, even in a class that's as strong as, as science is. In war, he's still invaluable. He is still invaluable. They've changed the uh, the node that was on the boss. Yes, that was helping him take fights. I you know, I was soloing so many bosses with him, and I would talk about that uh, very openly, but they changed the node, and he's still incredibly, incredibly strong in war, just can do so much. The power control, the buff immunity, um, and the really nice damage. A ability to do different sets of damage, right? He can do the, the rupture damage, but then he can also do the nice big SP2. You can use the SP1 to get the physical vulnerabilities up. He's a phenomenal champion. Long form, that's not his game. That's fine. And then again, a bit of a Goldilocks here. It's not too hard, not too easy. Two out of three for easy use makes perfect sense. Let's go ahead and check out the other champion tied for the number 10 spot. And it's Void. Void is a very cool example of a champion that's just lasting and just uh, almost like a timeless design. Really, really great. He has the immunities to uh, incinerate, I believe it is. And he, you can see we've got him as a three with the ease of use. I thought this was really surprising because it was Simula who helped kind of establish this. Now, Simula is an incredibly good player, but Simula is also very honest about these things. And he's like, look, he's not the hardest champion to use. You just kind of kind of know how to play the game. You can get through it. And in general, with all of those debuffs and getting the Fear of the Void up, the Void is a 8 out of 10. In Battlegrounds, he is a little slow. He is, right? He, he takes some setup. He, it, it, he was Battlegrounds. I have a feeling it was not even like a thought in Kaban's mind when Void came into the game. So War was the name of the game for the sort of competitive PvP format. And he's still extremely strong there, a staple attacker. Battlegrounds, he's a six. We're going to reflect that long form. Obviously can be used to reverse all kinds of things. We saw him used in uh, Abyss, and I believe he's been used in Necropolis as well. All totaling up to be a 28. And, and this is one of the things about the science class. Is all of these champions very worthy of being in the top 10? All of them very high scores. This is the highest scores to be like the number 10 that have a 28 total out of 38. And these champions are so incredibly different. These three champions are so incredibly different and strong for different reasons. It shows you the breadth and the strength of the science class. All right, let's move on to, again, another tie. We have a lot of champions in the science class in the top 10 uh, with a tie at the number eight spot. I mean, at the number eight spot is Cassie Lang. Again, she's tied with someone else, but, you know, she's one of those champions where, the like, I first played her, I was like, okay, 
I don't even, I don't have her mastered, but I can tell there's a lot of goodness here. And we got out those videos on that. And I'm really happy we, I, I did and was able to. Uh, the Buffy Median, and she also has immunities on top of that. Uh, she has the shrink down format, which they did eventually get fixed, is my understanding. I think she still whiffs every once in a while, and her size can get a little messed up every once in a while. But for the most part, that's under control. And you can it shows, I think, the fact that I don't believe those are 100% fixed. It's rare, but it, it's not 100%. And people are still using her in War and Battlegrounds. It kind of shows you how powerful she is. She does need to land her debuffs. That's an important part for her. She's a power sting champion, but she has a really nice mechanic. Uh, I think it's if you end your combo in the light, you're going to place that poison. The designer did a phenomenal job with her. Not a surprise knowing uh, their champions. So it's not really a shock here. Nine out of 10 in general, nine out of 10 in Battlegrounds, nine out of 10 in War. She's very, very tanky gal. They, uh, they, they, they fixed it. I believe it was a bug, uh, but it seemed like it was gonna be a massive nerf. But really, if you still spec into inequity, she's a really tanky gal. Long form, that's not her jam. Uh, and easy use, she is a little difficult to use. If you're really gonna get those nines uh, out of, tens and battlegrounds war and in general out of her you got to know how to play her well you need to know how to punish those specials you need to know how to punish and use your shrink down mechanic you got to keep an eye on your pin particles so she's not quite a two she's yeah she's not as tough as like viv vision or tigra but she is tough to use but if you get her down you're going to be richly richly rewarded let's move on to her tie mate at the number eight spot all right, tied at number eight, we have uh, we have another DLL champion to the surprise of no one really took the the game by storm in 2023, and I think this is his his yeah this is his easiest to use champion, and as a result, she can't do as much. Now the fact of the matter is, she's a very tough defender. I know she's causing a lot of problems for people, and I still haven't put out the how to fight photon video, but I'll just tell you, Falcon Mantis Baron Zemo. These are some really good champions. You want to have some fun? Maybe you can try uh, Lady Deathstrike. That's right. She can actually kind of work. People have done some good things with Hulkling, but you need to know how to handle Photon's uh, ramp up and build up in her specials and things like that. So keep that in mind. And I, I, one day I'll get out that video, but uh, she is tough. I'm not trying to tell you she's not. She's very good, but there are answers. There's answers that are probably in your deck or on your account. She's about an eight out of 10 in general. She doesn't have a ton of offensive use, but eight is a really good score. It shows you that. Uh, Battlegrounds, we are allowed to include her defender strength, which she obviously is. And then uh, she's one of my favorite dual threats because I can and have used her offensively against Dr. Dooms, Erintras, Man Things, and champions like that. Uh, there's metas that have ramped her up. And I think that's a lot of why people think she's so incredibly powerful offensive is the last war tactic ramped her significantly. Uh, when I put her out videos on her, I did make sure I called that out because I had a feeling people were going to be a little disappointed when that tactic went away and they tried to use her, I wanted to make sure people were ranked her up, understood. Now she's a ramp up champion too. So once you get her ramped, you're gonna have a good time as well. I love her, she's phenomenal. I'm not putting her down. I just wanna make sure people understand fully what they're getting. As a war champion, she has that perfect combination that we've talked about so many times. She's got that safety, that security. She's a relatively tanky gal if you at, as, um, expect into inequity, right? With all those debuffs that she's placing, she's very good for some difficult defenders. Think about it, it's named Man-Thing, Doctor Doom, and Rintra. Those are some of the most meta, tough, uh, mystic defenders in the game. Uh, she helps you handle mystic dispersion with that passive petrify that she gets there too. So uh, she's a staple war attacker and obviously defensive, but we didn't include defensive abilities, capabilities, or power uh, for the war long form. I could see her being good in that. If there's some Necropolis fights, uh, I wasn't kidding when I predicted I thought she might have some use. I think she was one of my dark horse options there. So if I'm able to sneak her onto a team and use her, I definitely, definitely will because I do enjoy playing her. And then ease of use. Like I said, she's probably DL's least difficult champion to use. I think she's relatively simple in comparison to the others. And so she's a bit of that Goldilocks. She's not a three, she's not a two, but uh, not a one. She ends up in a two. And as a result, she's got herself tied for the number eight champion in the science class. All right, let's move on to, you guessed it, another tie at the sixth spot. Coming in at number six, I love seeing this. This is a champion. You have to go way back. He came into the game, I got him, I was like, he's really good. Uh, I'm proud of the thumbnail, I'm proud of that video, and it's so cool. I think it's really Battlegrounds. This is another example of a champion where Battlegrounds has shown us how good this champion actually is, right? In PvP, we really only had War at that time, and he's got a little health pool now. He's got those auto evades, and those are really, really good. And uh, but he doesn't have like a great power control. He's got the taunt. 
And so I think the idea was like, well, he could be good for that Mangog that's always gaining a ton of power. But the concern was like, he, yeah, but he can't control the power. Well, he's got a really nice ability to uh, minimize and mitigate the damage of an SP3. You got to play him well, though. In general, I think he's a nine. And we're seeing that now because of Battlegrounds. He's one of the best defenders and one of the best attackers. He's one of the few dual threat tens out of tens. Like if you've watched the series, you know how rare it was to get a 10 out of 10 in Battlegrounds. In war, thanks to the tactic, I think he was being used. And it wasn't the tactic making him better. It was just that the tactic lined up and he happened to be attack and attacker. And so result, I think planners were willing to give him that chance. I hope that continues to happen, especially with him being available as a seven star. In long form, he has been used in some of this content and you can refresh his power stings uh, if you keep his spider nonsense high. You have to use your heavy really well. So there's a skill ask there, but it can actually happen. So we have him as a two. And then ease of use based on everything you just heard. And you can see why he's not a three. He's not a one. He is a two. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to the other champion tied for number six. None other than Silk. She's an absolute monster. I've not been able to get her as a six and of course, or as a seven star. But she is the one champion that when I go into battlegrounds, I immediately ban. So many of my defenders are big mystic defenders. And she just seems tailor made to absolutely destroy them. She's a nine in general, a nine in Battlegrounds, my one auto ban. There's one champion I auto ban, and it's Silk. She's a menace in war. She often gets banned and not allowed to be used. She has, does not have long form potential though, uh, and her ease of use is a two. It was Campo who pointed that out, and I'm very grateful to him for doing that. You do have to know what you're doing, and I believe with her, it's the striker that you really have to be able to interact well with. She seems like she was built uh, with a striker in mind, which is really, really cool. Phenomenal champion, you can and want to get her awakened if you can, because it's gonna help you take additional fights, but she's even good without it. Phenomenal champion, she's one who I could see us having higher up as we go into 2024. All right, let's move on to, you guessed it, another tie at the number four spot. Coming at the number four spot is Quicksilver. Now this is a champion that it feels good for me to see so highly rated, because it's not just me, right? I've been talking about for a very long time and telling the community, look how good he is. Look, I use him in all these uh, Grandmaster's Gauntlet fights. I've, I've been able to use him in war, off-season war. He's fantastic. He's amazing. Um, and here we are. And the group voted, right? The group was the one who's like, hey, you got to raise him up. You got to raise him up a little bit because they validated. They said in their experience and their uses, uh, if you have, want to see video of this, and, you, and I, like I said, I've done the Grandmaster's Gauntlet, but MP Blaze has done a lot of great stuff with Quicksilver in Necropolis. He, no one's going to argue how much power was in the guy's kit, right? It's just the enjoyment of playing him, and I get that. But 10 out of 10 in general. In Battlegrounds, not fun to fight for the most part, and also very, very strong against a variety of those toughest mystic defenders. Been able to handle a lot of metas, too. In War, he's phenomenal, right? A lot of the planners have really, I think, had their eyes open to how good he is. Now that we had some of the science, other science champions banned, we're like, hey, you can use Quilk, Quicksilver for the stuff. And lo and behold, they've been doing it. He's fantastic. Long form clearly has the ability to do massive, massive bursts of damage with that whiplash, especially off of the SP3. You uh, keep that along with his slow and things like that. He's a he's a great option for that. And like I said, MP Blaze has been using him in Necropolis. Make sure you check out that channel, see the video uh, content on that. And then ease of use. We're gonna kind of you know to me he's not a one but because we're it's just ease of use. But ultimately it makes sense to me because I understand his combos are funky. And even for me, like if I go a long enough time without playing him, I sometimes will even have trouble landing my specials. So. I guess it does fall under the umbrella of ease of use, and he is a one for that. I will admit his, his animations and his combos are a little funky, and when you miss your special, you have to sometimes reset the whole thing, and that's not fun. So let's go ahead and move on to the champion he's tied with for the number four spot. None other than Hulk. I mean, this guy is just a brute force of nature, right? The day is buffing live. I absolutely loved it. I went, uh, did a full essentials video on that. I went and bought... Uh, beat up the Grandmaster's Gauntlet Doom with him. Uh, he's a, I have him as a 10 in general. He doesn't have a ton of utility, but he does have an immunity. He's got the, uh, the debuffs off of his specials and then that massive, massive stun, right? I remember even doing that video and being like, I think I'm gonna be able to stun lock this Doom. And then we just had way more than enough time. We had so much time. Uh, really powerful synergy with Hercules, who's pretty good in this game. And it's his brute force strength nature. It is so strong 
that even with just the smaller amount of utility that we just mentioned, he's definitely a 10 out of 10. When, you know, new quest, new format, new content comes out. He's definitely someone you're thinking about. Battlegrounds, one of the best science attackers out there. Science is probably the best class out there. So when you're one of the best in the best, you end up with a nine. Even a little bit of tricky defensive use there, especially with that awakened ability. Uh, in war, a really nice travel partner with, with Hercules. So Hercules and Hulk together, it's not just the tactic. You can get some really great stuff done there. He's not like quite like a staple necessarily, but he's very good at what he does. Uh, long form, I might be using him in Necropolis. I know he's been using Necropolis. In particular, there's this one lane with the reverse controls, and you have the synergy with the Overseer, who we referenced in the beginning of this video. So I do want to point that out. I'm, I'm looking forward to possibly using that for that lane. It starts with Odin and uh, having a lot of fun there. I've been told it can go very, very well and that his damage can ramp. And if you go the SP3 route and get all that going, get some big red numbers as well. And then ease of use. He's about as easy as it gets to be this highly rated. Phenomenal champion. Feel very good with him as the number three. The numbers really match what we intuitively kind of already knew. Um, I'm sorry, as the number four champion, the number four champion, not number three. Now let's go ahead and move on to the number three. It's Titania. Now, this was an interesting one for me because she's an example of a champion where on my own, just my own intuitive without having really uh, broken everything down like this, I would have her as number two and possibly number one. And you might as well, right? Because we've talked about this, adjusting the rankings or like, how are you playing the game? But she's a 10 out of 10 to be able to go unstoppable, unblockable and indestructible. I said that in her the month she came out in the tier list. I was like, we're going to find uses for that because it's all passive as well. 10 out of 10. And then she's got all those debuffs. And I think we're actually finding some uses for them. Uh, Battleground, she is, in my opinion, the best science attack. She is. She comes up, I take her. Uh, she can take a variety of things, including Nick Fury. <laughs> Uh, phenomenal in war for the exact same reasons. Uh, she's got a big enough health pool. She's tanky enough. You add on all those debuffs with the inequity. She's debuff um, or she's buff immune. She can be played her SB2 style. She can play her SB3 style. She's fantastic. Long form, not her game. Fine. And then ease of use. Um, you know, I think you could have an argument for a two on her, but for the most part, you're hitting in the block. You're hitting the champion. You're ending in lights. You're heavying before you throw your special three. You go in, you win the game. So to have this high of a score, I think she is a three. And you can achieve those scores that we have for the other categories with relative ease, not completely easy, okay? I'm not trying to say this is simple and easy. But I'm saying with relative ease. And as a result, she ends up with that score of three out of three. Let's move into who is ranked number two. I can't stand this ranking. <laughs> I really can't. I, I, I just don't like it. Uh, but we got to reflect the, the truth. And the truth is you throw on uh, his pre-fight and you're just melting people. Uh, if you go up against energy damage or a mystic, you don't even need to throw on your, your pre-fight and you just are melting people. He's human torch. I guess that's what he's supposed to do. It just It just feels a little too easy. And I think the only reason why he's not higher up is because he's a little bit flimsy and because the game is often asking us for these other extra little tidbits like we've talked about with other champions. The problem is, or not the problem, but the thing is, is that he does so much damage so incredibly fast that he's able to sneak through. And so he's kind of able to, to keep on keeping on, even though the fight may have actually asked for more utility or other nuggets he's able to burst it down fast enough that it doesn't matter. Uh, he's a 10 out of 10 in general for that reason. Same with Battleground, same with War, same with long form content. It was actually really good in Abyss and you kind of had to work for it. It was nice and I'm aware or I've been told he can be used in Acropolis as well. And ease of use, just take hits onto the block and you heavy. You're good to go. Uh, and let, so let's move on to number one. All right, now I really enjoy this. I know some people think he's broken. I, I don't know, I'm not worried about it. I think he's he's OP, but I mean that in a good way. I think champions with a high level of OP are good. I love it. They're fun. And that is definitely Scorpion. And that's before you do the synergy with Venom. I think it's going to be a very long time before we see Scorpion as a seven star. He's a 10 out of 10 in general. If you could go to 15, he would be. Because I, I it's just incredible what this guy can do. I've shown it in so many videos. Uh, in Battlegrounds, a phenomenal, phenomenal attacker and actually an annoying defender with that Scorpion sense. In war, phenomenal attacker. You talk about someone who could take a ton of fights. He has a variety of damage modes that he can pick. You can pick them on your own per fight. You don't need to pick one for the whole whole lane, just per fight. That also changes his immunities. 
So, you know, you're talking about your hazard shifts and your different defender combinations. The guy just owns it. He has a refreshable slow if you pair him up with Toad, who we've shown in the, in the Mutant one, pretty good champion. He has uh, the extra Furies if you pair him with, uh, with Venom, who also is in the top 10 of Cosmic. Like, his synergy team is amazing. <laughs> uh, it almost feels like the modern day uh, Spider-Man Stark Enhance if Ghost Rider was better. Right, like with that Trinity for Spider-Man Stark Enhanced Blade and Ghost Rider, uh, Scorpion's just got it on, got it going on. The only reason we don't, he's not even higher with his total score is his long form score is not very high. But there's probably even an argument you could make that higher if you really wanted to. And ease of use, if we had gone back or kept the five out of five system, he would definitely be a five. You know, when I first got my hands on the CCP, I thought there's going to be this whole like intercepting with your heavy into a special thing. You don't need to do that. You absolutely do not need to do that. You can parry medium, medium, all the way to your special two. You land the special two, you get the petrify up. If you have them at a decent sig, you're gonna heal. And then you just medium, medium to your special one, get that up with the taunt. And usually the fight is over. Uh, he's, I, it was, it was, I don't know why, because it's probably weird for me to be like, I don't like Human Torch, but I like Scorpion. Maybe it's just because Scorpion's newer. He's a phenomenal champion. I love playing him. He's a lot of fun. For me, he's kind of like Hercules. Like, they're fun. Sometimes I like being overpowered. It is enjoyable, and I'm glad that exists in the game. Uh, these are our science champions. I know we're now going to move on to the best of 2023 and the top 20 uh, overall. I know not everyone's going to watch these in order, so hopefully you've checked out the playlist. It'll be the you know the top 10s of December 2023 or something like that, a playlist on my channel. We uh, put them all in there. An absolute blast doing this. Let me know what you think we got right. Let me know what you think we got wrong. And let me know if there's any just real surprises for you. Because in every single list, there's been at least one surprise for me, whether the champion was higher than I thought they would be or lower. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Massive shout out and thank you to my boys over at SSX. So many of them spent a ton of time sharing their knowledge, their expertise, and their experience in these modes, and also helped me come up with the formula in order to rank these champions. Specific thank you and shout out to Bitterstill, Campo, DLL, Gara, Na, Odysseus, Outline, Royu, Shibi, Simula, The Strands, Zahid, Matt Duhill, and of course my boy, Egatron. Our